Man, you know, moms have played a powerful and important role in the lives of all children, but especially in the African American family. Mm -hmm. They've been the breadwinner in most cases. Um, when the, the marriage resolved, she is the one that oftentimes kept the kids, often, not always now. But along with that, um, they have played a pivotal role in the life of children. And today we express it. The first uh, Mother's Day was done by a lady by the name of Anna Jarvis in 1908. Anna Jarvis belonged to a Methodist Church, St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. She created or started Mother's Day and then after that it was became an official holiday in 1914 and the rest is history. But if there was no Anna um, Jarvis, I would still be celebrating my mom. I don't need a particular day. I want to show my mom I love her every day. Amen. I got news for some of you folks who don't know how to love and show your mom love. You're going to miss her when she gone. Yes, yes, yes. I got some witnesses in the house today. Amen. So as we look today, we see that uh, mothers are changing. They've always been the backbone of the family, but now the average mother we know, every one of them want to be a superstar. Mm. Superstar. Forget the kids. It's all about me. What I want. What makes me happy. And let the school raise them in the, in the morning and, mm. and let the TV watch them at night. Mm. And we live in a generation where the values that our mothers instilled in us, they're not passing on. They're not being passed on to the next generation. Every generation gets wiser and weaker. Hey, Isaiah said it this way, can a woman forget her nursing child or suckling child? that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Then he says, even these may forget, but God says, yet I will not forget thee. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No wonder David said, for my mother and my father forsake me. The Lord will take me up. Amen. David knew what it meant to be rejected. When the, the, the prophet came to anoint a king for Israel, Jesse never included David. Right. All the other sons. Mm -hmm. But the one that he didn't include. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, My God, I know why you're sitting there, brother-in-law. The one that he did not include. That's the one that became king of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes what you see today, you won't see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a setback yes. is a setup for a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if that yeah. lady could see you now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. When a child is conceived within 16 to 22 days after conception, that child has a heartbeat. Mm. 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 Now it needs someone to care for it. Not when it gets out, but even in the womb. Oh, mm. Hallelujah. It's what you put in that child. All right. It's where you are going while that child is within you. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to the right music? Are you going to church? Mom, I think you did something right. Look at all these children. Mm -hmm. and they turned out pretty good. I think they did all right. Amen. 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 And 
so we see the success of, of what mothers mean and what they have done for generations mm -hmm. and for generations. Here is one quote here. There's nothing as powerful as a mother's love and nothing as healing as a child's soul. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more powerful than the love of a mother and the role of a mother also. Mm -hmm. That role of a mother is so important. You know, I've had to ask my wife from time to time, what are you doing? Because every week she wants all of the grandkids over. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just, she's teaching them about life and she's tutoring and she's, as a matter of fact, all of them are just like on the honor roll now. And 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 um, she's and she told me I'm leaving my my footprint. I'm leaving my stamp on them. Yeah. They're gonna be good citizens. They're gonna be educated. They're gonna be saved. She had uh, another relative this week, and I said, "Who is this?" She said, um, "Somebody, somebody." But he, he's in the he's, he's a family kid, and so I said, "Okay." And she she taught she had him learning scriptures. He quoted two scriptures before he left that day to me, and um, and, and I said, "Man, you're gonna be a preacher." He <laughs> just somehow he stood on. <laughs> it's what you put in him. And she has left a footprint. Amen. She left it on our children. Now she's leaving it on the grandchildren. Some of you all need to take your foot off them and put your foot. Print on them. I say that again, and somebody missed that. You need to take your foot off of them and put your footprint on them. Yes. When you put your footprint on them, you leave an indelible impression on their heart and on their lives to be something, to be saved, to do something with your life. Now, I didn't know I'd do all these things that my wife do. I, I was, I'm cut from a different cloth, but I'm learning. And I try to help too. I go in there and do my thing. She said, you know math, you teach the math. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she teach all the other subjects, including Bible, by the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. The little boy said before he left the other day, he said, let me read that book again. <laughs> he wanted to read the Bible. Now I'm gonna tell you, I don't remember one time we ever read the Bible in our house, and I'm sorry. But I made it. Look. <laughs> Ain't the Lord great? I don't remember one time. And then some of you all can almost say amen to that. Amen. 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 They, they, they talk good talk on Sunday. <laughs> How many of y'all grew up with folks on Sunday? Boy, they be blasting the some, them church songs. You be thinking... <laughs> they must have got born again. <laughs> they be blasting them future songs on Sunday. You, you, you think, you think, boy, it's a holy house. <laughs> Who am I preaching to? Y'all don't tell this to me. But all through the week, you know. And when you have a Sunday religion, and then on Monday you tell God just beat it, and you tell God, you know, oh, hey, you know. You tell God, you know, hey, I, I don't need you no more. That's the way some people are raised. But we're so blessed that God gave us parents that loved him, parents that shared with us, who taught us the way. And I'm grateful for the legacy that um, my wife is trying to leave for her family and for her children and her grandchildren and others, for others. You know, um, when when uh, when she um, when we got married, you know she there must there must be fifty to hundred people who got saved as a result of my wife at Greater Refuge in Lakeland. Mm -hmm. Fifty to hundred. Mm -hmm. That's a small number. Mm -hmm. And then she used to do prison ministry and and, and, and revival, go to revival, tent meeting, everything, anything her father did, she was always there. But when she got married, 
and have babies three in a row. One, two, three. I mean, you know, um, she couldn't go no more. And she was praying and crying because she couldn't no longer do that. And, and God said to her, um, she said, Lord, why? Why I can't go, Lord? Why I can't go and to prayer like I used to go early in the morning and at noonday? Why I can't go when they go to have um, street meetings and when they have the revivals? Why I can't go, God? And um, mm -hmm. he told her work was home. Mm -hmm. He told her work was home. And um, one time she was saying, you know, uh, Lord, what can I do for you? He said, go in and read them children a uh, uh, Bible story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said she didn't feel the presence of God when she was reading the Bible story. She didn't feel the presence of God when she was changing those diapers. She didn't feel, you know, the anointing. You know how some of y'all be dipping and all? She didn't feel nothing. But my God, look how they turned out, every one of them. Every one of them turned out alive. Do you not know there are over 18 million children who live with our biological parents and, 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 and who um, need to be adopted or live with others? And I believe the number is even higher than that now. Mm -hmm. But the Bible still says the same thing. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? And I'm telling you, you get what you are. You get what you are. And so what you have to do is try to be the best person you can be. And then pray that God will give you his very best. Okay? See, you can't be Mr. Right looking for Miss Wrong. Hello, somebody. Amen. But I don't like bad boys, Pastor. I like them who beat the side of the head, <laughs> slap them around a little bit. I, that's crazy. I don't live like that. Just tell somebody I don't live like that. I don't live like that. I told my wife, my name, um, you ain't got to worry about me, hit you. Please don't hit me. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do all that hitting. Now that you've been hitting, now she got shades on, walking behind you. That, that, that's nasty. <laughs> nasty. Want to hit some? You say you love. You said you love. Right. You said you love. Right. Now you want to hit her. Mm -hmm. And they lie about it. Mm -hmm. Remember one time we were. I went someplace and came back home. My mom had a little mark on her face. <laughs> and and uh, my dad, uh, we asked, what happened? He said, Roach bitter. Mm. So that, that's the lie he told. Y'all yeah. can stay with me. <laughs> but I remember one time, I, I never saw my dad hit my mom, but I remember one time he stopped coming toward her and all the kids, you, I know you sure don't remember this one, we went in the kitchen. We started handing out the knives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You saw that? You got his hair on his head. That ain't gonna go down the way I planned. Well, he was very bright. He was very bright. He had to know. He had. He, he knew wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. And so today, you need to take more time to find someone that loves God and love you. Amen. Who can find a virtuous woman? See, sometimes we don't even wait to find out a person virtuous. The only thing we're looking for is lips, hips, and fingertips. <laughs> can I get an amen? amen? And if you did, say ouch. <laughs> and, and, that's, and when you do that, that's all you get. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking for a virtuous woman. The scripture says in the Amplified Bible, an excellent woman, one who is spiritual. Tell somebody, you need somebody spiritual, you need somebody saved now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go to the gutter. They get the gutter mode. I didn't say the other mode. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Mm How -hmm. I many of y'all need all four of them things? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I heard my, my son honoring his wife today. Amen. Amen. But if she wasn't all them things, brother, 
She wouldn't be sitting on that front row. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put on the morning bed. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Who is he? Who is he who can find her? See, the Bible says, whosoever findeth the wife findeth the good thing. They obtain favor from the Lord. But you, you, when you find her, you got to watch her. Don't go up there. Hey, my name is. Save your breath. Just watch her. I watched my wife for a long time before I actually went and talked to her. Because that way I had a chance to, to, to make sure she had the right character, the right demeanor, that she was who she said she was and she wasn't faking. Amen. Because everything that glitter ain't gold. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. But some of y'all can't wait. I feel it. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and as a result, you make the same mistake over and over again. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. When the Bible says wait on the Lord, it's the, it's the term that I use as if you are a waiter. Mm -hmm. When you see a waiter in a restaurant, the waiter has that tray, he, and he's actually serving people. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. When you're single, serve the Lord with gladness. Mm -hmm. Just serve him. He'll bless you if you just serve him. Okay. Some people don't, don't, they can't wait. They, they ain't got no time to serve God. They got to find a man. Mm. They got man on the brain, mm. or they got woman on the brain, depending on what sex they are, you know. But 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 get that off your mind, cause God, the Bible says, uh, no good thing will He withhold from them that walk up right. He'll give you what you want. Mm -hmm. He'll give you His very best. Mm -hmm. Amen. So listen, the Bible says also in the next verse, the heart of our husband trusts in her. When you get married. Don't be trying to establish trust after you get married. You should have found out really you can trust that joke before you got married to it. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I didn't know you'd do me like this. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you have to watch him. You have to watch him. Were you watching her? Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> and he's he still watching her. <laughs> And she's a good girl. She's got a beautiful wife. She's a wonderful Amen. woman. Listen, and so, so the Bible says, and he will have no lack of gain. Mm -hmm. You know, you need someone who adds something to your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not take away everything mm -hmm. you got. Mm -hmm. Suck the life out you. Mm -hmm. hey, you got to get someone who adds to you. Yes. I didn't know my wife was a school teacher. I was watching, I kept up with her, but I didn't know she was teaching school because she'd go around bragging, you know, I'm a look, look at me, I'm a school teacher. Where she at in church? I know she wasn't a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she might have been on the cheerleading squad. <laughs> My God, she'll not know what school teacher. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you gotta get someone who brings something to the game. <laughs> Hello. Amen. So listen, she comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. Mm. You can't play tit for tat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone do something wrong, now you got to get them back. Mm -hmm. I got I to get you back now. Mm -hmm. I know what you did last summer. I got to get you back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that ain't how you have a relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't play tit for tat. Mm -hmm. The Bible says she comforts, encourages, and does him only good, all and not evil, all the days of her life. You got to find somebody like that. That's when you have a, a ruby, you have a pearl of great price. That's when you got a ruby. When you find someone like that, and don't tell me you can't find them. There are people out there. Amen. They just want one person. God will do you like He did me. Get you out there and starve you. I've been saved about five years. No girlfriend, nothing. Just. High and dry. Hallelujah. Y'all praying for me today. <laughs> and I was praying. I said, Lord, if you give me one, I'll love her. I'll treat her right, Lord. I'll do everything I can for her. Amen. And, 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 and he did. You know, one man um, asked the Lord. He said, um, um, Lord, 
Um, will you give me a, a woman, Lord? Uh, one that will do everything. When we argue, she'll always say, you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she'll give me all her money. <laughs> she'll do whatever I tell her to do. <laughs> How much will she cost, Lord? He said, that woman like that cost your arm and leg. Yeah. So the man turned to God and said, well, how much can I get for a rib, then? Y'all know that's right. Y'all pray. Are y'all praying in here today? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so listen. The Bible says that woman, she looked for wool and flax and worked with willing hands in the light. Do you do what your family, do you do what you do for your family willingly? I know, honey. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna eviscerate this English language today. <laughs> listen, listen. She looks for wool and flax and works willing hands in delight. Now she's willing to work and she does it with delight. Mm. Do you do that for your family? Are you fussing every step of the way? Can't do nothing because you care. You tear up everything. You don't clean up nothing. You... This woman was doing things and it was willingly with her hands in the light. Change your attitude. You change your world. You can, you can gain more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Man. The Bible talks about be kind, be gentle. We, we've forgotten those scriptures, though. Listen, she's like a merchant ship, abounding with treasure. She brings her household food from far away. Amen. I know this got to mean she cooks sometimes. Amen. Listen, <laughs> she rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maid. This is a good woman. This is a good woman. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Now, um, my wife cooks about five to seven days every week. I say that's too much. Um, but, you know, but, but the food is good, but I'm over 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, we got a sweet lady in the church. And she loved to keep pastor nice and plump. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now listen what the Bible says in Proverbs 31. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. She considers a field before she buys and accepts it, expanding her business uh, prudently. With her profits, she plants fruitful, vin fruitful vines in her vineyard. This woman is an entrepreneur. This woman is a working woman. You know what my grandmother did? I had a grandmother by the name, we call her my baby. Mm -hmm. My baby took a, a washboard mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an iron. Couldn't read and couldn't hardly write. And bought most of the houses on that block she lived on. Mm. With a washboard and an iron. Mm. Don't you tell me, you, you, some people don't, uh, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for a job, but I ain't taking that, but it don't pay enough. Well, how much does poverty pay? Mm. Mm. How much just standing there looking pay? Mm. I don't know. So, I, you know, I know we face those challenges, but I'm telling you what my grandmother did, because she was persistent and diligent, the Bible says the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. If you get in the game and just work, you can have something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When my father passed away, he said something to my mother. He says, Dora, if I work with you, we could have had something. Mm -hmm. Don't be like my father. You're married. Don't be like him. Work with your wife. Mm -hmm. Work with your husband. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't have a wife or husband, work with your family. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how many families, mm -hmm. they just nasty mm -hmm. to each other. All you're doing is fulfilling prophecy and fulfilling scripture. Mother will be against father, father will be against son, son will be against daughter. All you're doing, 
You're just in the headlights of scripture. You're just fulfilling that scripture. Showing that, that you can't get along. But if you have God's spirit inside of you, you can get along then. So you need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will cut out some of that foolishness mm -hmm. that's, that's in some of you all. Just foolishness. Foolishness. Here's a woman. She might have been in a third world country, but she was sure not doing third world thinking. That woman was trying to make something. And here we are in America. And sometimes I know we live in a country that treats us like third class citizens. But let me tell you something. I am not who you say I am. Amen. But I am who he said I am. Amen. He said, I am loved. I am accepted. He said, I'm more than a conqueror. He says, I can do all things through him who has strengthened me. So whatever you got to say, it's like water rolling off a duck's bag. What other people say don't matter, don't mean nothing more. As long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got his approval, that's all that matters to me. So when people don't treat you right, this is what the Bible tells me to do. It says, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. How many of you all are learning how to set your affections on things above? You see, this, this world is not our home, brother. We are citizens. Of, a, of another country. Mm -hmm. Our, we got a home, a building not made with hands eternal in the heaven. We go in some place where we would never grow old. Hallelujah. There's some place better than this here. So you need to learn how to set your affections on things above. And, and do like the psalmist said too, Psalms 25, 15. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of net. You know, we're in this world, and we get in trouble. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll get you out of that trouble. Yes. Yes. And so listen, here's another psalm for you, Psalm 16 and 8. Listen, I have set the Lord always before me. What does that mean? That means you keep it real. You keep him first. Mm -hmm. See, some people, God ain't first until they walk through that door on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But he was second, third, fourth, fifth, and sometimes sixth. Mm. But the psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. And listen, I shall not be moved. I shall not be shaken. Though the winds come, the rains descend, and everything happens, I, I cannot be moved. I will not be shaken. Because we live in a world today where some people trust in horses, mm -hmm. some people trust in chariots. They, they think the government is supposed to do everything for you. Mm -hmm. They think the parents are supposed to do everything for you. I think they've done enough for you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when, when, when my sons, I call my, 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 my sons, these young men who came up in the church, mm -hmm. when they got a certain age and they started working, getting jobs, I said, hey, did you, did you give your mom something this week? Mm -hmm. That tell you I told them. And if they lived in my house, I made sure they gave their mom something. Amen. Because I locked that door just as good. You be standing out there like Dino or Fred. Amen. I locked the door on them. Amen. Listen, you are teaching them how to live. And my sons know that I would teach them. I don't know if they ever gave you anything, Mom, but I sure got on them, Mom. I got on them. Because I told them, I taught them. I said, hey. That toilet paper didn't come off the shelf. Huh? Them lights don't come on just because you flip that switch up. Amen. I know you give all that money to them girls. You better give your mama some money. I used to get on them. Amen. They'll tell you every one of them. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? <laughs> you know who. I'll get them. Because I know who builds a family. And often it is these mothers. Now, I'm not doubting men. I'm not fighting men because men play a pivotal role yeah. if they're in the house and in the family. But if the man ain't there sometimes, that mother, all the responsibility on the mother. Mm -hmm. And that's why the income 
disparity among African Americans so low is because the mother is carrying all the weight. Mm -hmm. If she had a, a counterpart who was making the same, they would be in a different income bracket. But because she is working alone by herself, and oftentimes the children, when they get jobs, they don't contribute nothing to the budget. Mm -hmm. They just buy all of the, 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 mm -hmm. the um, grease and that other stuff they can buy. Them. Mm -hmm. Weave and fingernails, buying all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything but heaven who has taken them through. So I, 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 I taught our young men. I used to be on them, brother. I used to be on them, brother. You, you ask them. Amen. They, they might have amnesia or dementia by now. They might not remember, but I, I sure don't have amnesia or dementia. I did it because I knew one day they'd be doing what they're doing now, taking care of family. Mm -hmm. Most of my sons got houses, apartments, and all kind of stuff. They ain't never been put out evicted. If they did, I don't know how they did. And the reason why is because they learned to contribute to their household budget before they got out. So I'm all for that note, okay? Listen, I got to wrap this message up here. I'm in Proverbs 31, 19 to 21. I'm gonna have to close here. She stretches out her hand to the distaff. There are women who are always helping us. Mm -hmm. Sister Kate's mother, Mother Howard, and, mm -hmm. and so many of you women, Mother Franklin, and, and, and you, you name it. They've done so much to help others, much to help others. Mm -hmm. And her hand holds the spindle as she spins wool into thread of clothing. She opens and extends her hand to the poor. You know, my, my, my grandmother sold dinner. When everybody that came to get a dinner from my grandmother didn't have no money. You know that. They might have stopped at the store before they got there. Didn't have no money when they get there. But she would give them a dinner anyhow. And sold it through the last Yeah. Night. And so she did that. She does not fear the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. This woman took care of her household. I'm gonna tell you something, I got a problem when I see um, the, the, the woman all dressed up and the children all head nappy and, mm -hmm. and, and, and clothes all wrinkled and look like they um, slept in them clothes and then she she looked like she just walked out of bold magazine or something. Mm -hmm. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, aren't you glad we can do you like that, my son? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's enough. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, I said I'm going to close, so I'm not going to go any longer today. But I want to say this to you all. I am so grateful for the role of you women because you all have held us up. You made us who we are. You'd be surprised the role of a woman. And you know what? Women are not second class citizens. Can I get an amen? Amen. My wife don't walk behind me, she walk beside me. Amen. And I'm glad she ain't trying to get in front of me. But some of y'all got problems. Hello, somebody. Especially black men. He's going to be a preacher one day. You just, you just keep on preaching this. All right, so, so listen, listen, listen. I am grateful that she occupies the space. When God calls her your helpmate, that does not mean that she does not have and share the same role that you share. Is that clear? Amen. Um, there, there was, I, I don't know who it was, but there was a man, he knew one scripture in the Bible. And, and, it's, and, it's, um, and it's, I think the scripture says something about wives obey your husband. Is that what it's saying? Oh, okay. See, I don't, I, I might, see, I don't know it as well as I, as, as I should because I don't have that problem. Hello, somebody. Amen. But, but, but that's the only scripture that brother knew. 
he he just want her to cower down and he'd be dead wrong. Mm. You know, even the devil can quote a scripture, mm. but he sure can't live it. Mm. We live in a generation where I am so grateful for these stellar examples that God has given us in the house of the Lord. Great women of God who have done everything they can for their family. And now they're passing it on to the next generation. Would you stand in the presence of God today?